Shalom, it's Mariah Aliza with oh, Ashley Village, and today I'm shooting this video to share um, what my rising seventh graders agenda or planner, academic planner, looks like for the 2018-2019 school year. I will say I've become smarter <laughs> over the years in homeschooling. I first start a agenda or academic planner beginning in grade four. I do have a transition in grade three. Maybe I'll shoot a video about that later if I get enough comments about it um, or suggestions about it or requests about it. <laughs> I will um, shoot it. But we definitely started an academic planner in grade four. So my rising seventh grader, he's had one for grade four, for grade five, for grade six, and also now grade seven. So this is his fourth agenda um, since, you know, since he's been educated. And I used to like print a bunch of things that I wanted and try to compile it myself and that's taxing and as soon as I make a mistake on something that's a piece of paper and all the ink on it that's a waste. I've done so many different things and so I've kind of just settled on the easiest thing to do is to just buy a inexpensive planner. I'm talking less than 10 bucks, 10, 11 dollars, less than that. Um, and then just add the die hard sheets that I just have to have in it in order to keep him organized and functioning. So I used to teach school. I know that if you set students up very well in terms of organization and what they are physically responsible of, the year is smooth, particularly with, with lazier students or even sometimes with boys, they're just not as organized or as together sometimes as their female counterparts not all the time but sometimes or most of the time that's the case and so I find that really organizing them up front just really helps for a smooth school year so there are certain sheets that I just need to be in the agenda because it just helps organize them in ways that I don't see regular you know planners or agendas doing so I found it easier to just spend the ten dollars on something inexpensive and then just I I've custom made the sheets that I want and um, I just take the bind off it normally comes spiral bound like this and I take it off insert the sheets that I need where I want them to show up at in the agenda and then just rebind it and then that way it stops me from printing all those sheets because for ten dollars these sheets are already front and back they already have color on them they already have what I need and it, I just can't beat ten dollars I'm not going to and I think this one was like nine so I'm not going to be able to print this many sheets for that amount of money so I just go ahead and add print what I want throw it in there and then I'm all done and then you see I add these tabs because it just helps keep them organized. I haven't written on them yet because now I'm starting in grade 7 I'm going to let him do that I think. I'm trying to release certain things but I know I like it to look a certain way too. So I'm going to get make an attempt to have him do that. Um, just put it in his own handwriting because it's his own planner. Where like in 4th grade and 5th grade I was still kind of okay I want this to say this kind of for him. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around in order to share the contents of what's in it. The majority of it is just the raw planner as it came to me, so I share a few sheets for you to see inside, and then I'll spend the majority of the time talking about the sheets that I added, and then we're out of here. All right, so give me a minute to turn the camera around, and I'll show you what the planner looks like. So we're back with my 7th grader student planner. Very simple. This particular company has about four or five different, maybe even six, um, but it has enough of variety in terms of the cover. My son just chose this one, so this is the one that we went with. So I'm going to open it up and walk through it with you. Um, so it comes with this divider separator. And then, of course, you get the year at a glance um, for 2018, 19, 2019, 20, and 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 21. Woo! Try saying that three times fast. Okay, so this one that I added, this is a TPT download. I'll throw it up in the card. This is um, something that I like to add to his agenda. So we typically get started on it. Well, let me, there is a vision board that goes with it. We get started with the vision board about three to four weeks before school starts. And then he works on this throughout the school year. So... 
I did not have this one last year, but I had something else like it. But I like this one better, so I chose this. So it has vision, I think it's four sheets, effort, challenges, as well as, oh, is it four sheets? Nope, it's just three. I'm sorry. Challenges, results, and goals. Okay, so now we're at the front cover of the planner where it would have started if I didn't add this into it. So this planner belongs to, and then just your typical, you know, study skills, um, internet safety. Now, one of the things that I like to have at the beginning is something that I put together. And so I just call it house, house, my attendance and work ethic. So basically, and we don't start school until later in August, but I'll read it to you. It says, before you begin your assignments for the day, give yourself one check in attendance. So I have him keep up with his own attendance in this way. Um, after you have completed your assignments, bring your completed work to your teacher. That's me for evaluation and scoring and completion and accuracy work ethic. So let's say that he's going to start school August 1st just because it's here. He gets up. He has his agenda his lessons are already in here he gives himself a check because he's in school for the day he's present he's here and then at the end i will evaluate his work either for completion or accuracy some subjects actually do require scoring and then i give him the check for work ethics saying i've seen your work and it meets um, his father and i's um, quality in order to give him that check and work ethic and then we're done. So I think I walk a little bit more through this in another video that I'm going to shoot. It's been on my to-do list for a while. So I'll stop there so that I'm not redundant in a later video. And then I just kind of filled it with quotes that, I, that are some quotes that he likes. Like, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude, Dr. Maya Angelou. That's actually a quote that I like for him because we have to work on that. But then the rest of the other two are his favorites. Um, I don't have to be... What you want me to be, I'm free to be who I am, Muhammad Ali. And then an African proverb for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. And he tends to be a planner, so this works out well for him. Okay, and then these tabs are just tabs that help differentiate months. So then August, September, October, etc. And I'll just have him write that on there when we have our planning meeting for the beginning of the school year. We haven't done that yet. We have another few weeks. Okay, and then everything else is standard. So those two things that I added at the front, and then everything is how it just comes. I'm completely fine with this. Having a vocabulary word for the week. Having this week's goals, which actually I was looking for that in the agenda because it's going to you know pair well with this. And then I like that it also has... A Saturday and a Sunday option. It's smaller because we don't need a lot, but I like that it's there. And I like that it has like this don't forget it gives him some reminders or a little list to make for himself. And that's pretty much all I'm looking for in a typical planner for like a 6th, 7th, 8th grader type thing. Okay, so the only other thing that I add is what I add to the back. So the agenda falls off here. So now I like to add my syllabi. So the syllabi that I have for him is just what is his core that's required or if there's anything outside of the core, it's because I'm giving him a credit for it. So in this case, he just has six subjects. Um, all six of them, no, five of them are core. One is not a core, but he's going to get a credit for it. So it works well for him and me for him to have his syllabus for that all here or the syllabi all here and then depending on where he's at with his lessons he can come here and he knows what books and resources to use he has the course description to kind of give him an idea of what's going to go on um i include how i'm going to weigh out the course and that does matter to him he's just an achievement based kid he likes to know where his points are being earned and what that means and then um, for our homeschool, you have to score 80% or higher in anything in, um, in order to continue to move on. Otherwise, we stop and I have to reteach, rescore, etc. And then he has a schedule, which really helps him. So when he gets done with the particular thing, he crosses it out here on his syllabus. If for any reason I'm like, oh, I want to spend an extra week on that, he just knows where he is. We can easily 
mark out the 10 and put 17 here if we need to. And we don't need to follow this to the T. It just helps gives us some order so that we have flexibility to move things around when we need to without losing where we are in our um, studies. Right, and then the same, the scores, attendance, credit hours, whatever, it's gonna be the same at, for every syllabus. Um, what we do is after, um, at the end of the week, um, he has like, let's say, I don't know, let me just open to a week. Let's say it's the week of November 5th and he has all his lessons here, which we're kind of checking off as we go. Then we meet at the end of the week and I asked him, I'll turn it around for you like this. I ask him, you know, considering what you did in whatever week that was, let's just say one, can you go ahead and write me a sentence or two, maybe three, and then Obviously, if you had an important task, an important project, include that, what you did for the week, and then we total out those hours, and it just helps track our hours. Um, we began this last year in grade six. Um, he did not reach, in our state, we needed 150 hours. He didn't reach 150 hours in every single subject. I wasn't expecting him to. What I was doing was trying to help build gradually over time. Um, him spending more time in a particular subject or maybe an extra day in a particular subject in order to, by the time it needs to count, he is used to spending about 150 hours in that subject for the year. So, of course, the ones that I'm giving him credit for are the ones he can easily, he doesn't have any problem um, adding up 150 hours. And also, he's able to do the, the um, content on a high school level very easily so I feel good about that okay so then the tabs here is just mirroring that right so he has his math with business and finance if you've seen that video and then the schedule looks different per subject the weight looks different as well um, and then the same thing he has the tracker the other thing that he has, which I didn't show it in that other subject, but he has is, let me turn it this way for you, is his score. So I let him be responsible for this. I still have to help him out from here, here to there, but his responsibility and his diligence is increasing with me organizing his um, studies in this way, but also making him responsible for it. So whatever, let's say since we're doing teaching textbooks and math, let's say he just writes down lesson 20 and 21 and then he can put the score there. And then whatever the next lesson is and he puts the score there. So we just continue to add up his scores as he goes along. All right, and then um, honors, English, language, arts. He's just a little, a little advanced in it. He doesn't know that, but... Um, so it's a little, I just write that for me so that I can remember that that's what I did for him. Okay, and then he has the same thing, his weight, his percentage, objectives, and then the schedule. So you can see based on the subject, the schedule looks different. And he's used to that because the layout is just different depending on how the content is. And then the same thing, he has his tracker and his grades. Okay, and then we're doing Eastern, Eastern World History and Geography and History and Geography. Um, this coming year, so the same thing. He has the text, he has the weight, and then he has the schedule so he can easily just come here and check off. Tracker and grades and then multicultural lit. Same thing. Scores, schedule, tracker, grades, and then finally, agricultural science. Laid out the same way here. He has the weight, scores, schedule, tracker, grades and then it just came with this little sticker sheet and then that's it so as you can see i just like to add my syllabi my tracker and my grade sheet to the back and in the front i like to have some type of visionary tool again this is my first time using this one i've used others in the past i think i'm going to stick with this and though i like it above everything and then i like having this attendance and work ethic in there that i just i created it myself and I just stick it in there. Otherwise, it's the regular planner. So that's what my rising seventh grade student planner or student agenda looks like. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom.